Hello, friends, and welcome to another home edition of the Press Box Preview here on KRVN. Tyler Cavalling and Scott Foster joining me yet again. And, well, Scott, it's another great week that we have uh, on tap for you of high school football. A triple header for you. And, boy, these should be really great matchups here this upcoming Friday. But uh, uh, for you, what are we kind of looking at is right now we're, we're basically almost halfway through the season after this week. Yeah, we're getting into heating up district play now and starting we're going to really start to see the teams that have to get wins if they want to get into the playoffs, if they want to get a chance of winning their district, this is the time to put it together. And, uh, you know, when you get into this to the fourth week, you pretty much know your team at this time. And so this is where you got to start winning and you've got to start figuring out who are going to be your players. And and so uh, I think teams know that coming into this week, we've got some some tough matchups for some teams. And so uh, it should be a lot of fun. And it should be interesting because you have on one end of the spectrum, some teams that are undefeated. If you get a win here, you pretty much solidify if you're in class C through down to D2, you solidify a spot virtually in, in the playoffs just because of how expanded they are. Meanwhile, if you're a team that hasn't won yet, well, you certainly might be in some trouble. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, you know, and if you're one of those teams that's kind of on the bubble, uh, you've got to put up some wins here and and get better uh, before we get time to start picking playoff teams. Well, let's start with our first matchup here. We're getting a triple header that can be heard on at the stations of KRVN. It's Southern Valley at Elm Creek. And that game can be heard on 880 KRVN, pregame at 635. That game will be kicking off at 7 o'clock. Well, as we dive into this contest, Elm Creek, we knew it was going to be kind of a, uh, a measuring stick type of contest last week with Amherst, and they fell to the Broncos 28-6, to the final score in that one. And Scott, let me tell you what, it was somewhat of a, an eye-opener. I'm not sure many people thought Amherst could be this good. Yeah, I think it was it was a surprise. I did not – I didn't expect – Elm Creek, I thought it'd be a good game. Uh, I didn't expect Elm Creek to fall like that. And so that was a bit of a surprise. We were expecting the Buffaloes to be one of the best teams in our in our area. And so now they got to kind of circle the wagons here a little bit. And uh, they got a tough one uh, to do that with. Yeah, Elm Creek gave up a lot of big plays. And, and to be honest with you, on their offensive side of the football, they were just stifled. They were held to only 47 yards rushing. We know this could be a potent offense at times, but to be held to under not only 100 yards, but under 50 yards of rushing, that's going to be a pretty good defense. Yeah, that is a good defense, and that's a team. Uh, Elm Creek has year in and year out under Jay Stulen been able to run the ball and be able to establish the ground game. And so they got that taken away, a uh, relatively inexperienced quarterback. And so – uh, you know, again, they're going to have to kind of figure that out in a hurry this week. Well, their opponent again this week is Southern Valley. They're two and one on this season. So, again, this is going to be another tough matchup really for both of these teams. But for the Eagles, boy, they've been soaring here in the first couple of weeks. Their offense has scored at least 34 points in all three games that come off beating Cambridge last week, 36 to 26, a final in that one where they forced three turnovers in that contest defensively. But the, this is a Southern Valley team that brings back some good skill players and really good experience from last season. Yeah, well, it's kind of a nice story considering they didn't really get to play much last season. And and so uh, it's kind of a neat neat thing. They've had a, two wins in a row, tight, tough wins for the most part where they had to really battle, which can, can make a team a lot better. And uh, that win over Cambridge – was good for them. I think they're coming into this game in a very different place than Elm Creek. I, I think Elm Creek has a feeling they need to get this win. Southern Valley is uh, feeling really good. They've got some momentum right now. And so that makes it a really interesting uh, game for sure. Well, again, it's a, a pair of a two and one teams going head to head this upcoming Friday, Southern Valley versus Elm Creek. And that game can be heard on 880 KRVX. Second matchup uh, of the triple header that can be heard on KRV on stations. It's 93.1 the river. That'll be Overton visiting the Loomis Wolves. And, well, Scott, these two teams are on totally different ends of the spectrum coming into this year. Uh, Overton has really struggled this season. 0-3. They're still really young after losing a lot of talent and really experience from a season ago. But they've given up at least 40 points to opponents 
and they just have struggled to score, including coming off of a loss to Pleasanton 52 to 6 this past Friday, which obviously those two teams met in the semifinals last year. That was a little bit different matchup this season. Yeah, and we expected, and I don't think we're too surprised. We knew Overton was going to going to struggle because they were young and they were going to really uh, have to find themselves. And, uh, you know, Will Kahanek has had a decent year and stuff for Overton, but boy, it's, it's just, it's just going to take some time for them. Um, I expect them to get better. They have, they have a great tradition there. It's just going to take some time and they, they, but they've got another tough game here. Yeah. Their offense has struggled this year. They don't even have 400 total yards of offense between rushing and, and passing coming into the game on Friday. And let's be honest, it's been a while since we have seen an overteen football team struggle like this. Yeah, it, it is. And But, you know, uh, honestly, that's kind of supposed to happen once in a while, and, and uh, parody is there. And so it just it struck Overton this year. Well, how about the Lewis Wolves? They're 2-1 and one coming into the game on Friday. The only loss this season was kind of an ugly one to Kennesaw, 44-0. But Kennesaw has been a pretty good team this year. I believe they're 3-0. and oh. Otherwise, this is a high-scoring offense as well. They've scored 42 points in the two wins. They're coming off a, a victory over Giltner, 60-12 to 12 last week. And, boy, they, they really have a great ground game. It seems like that's where it starts. Where they have 200-yard-plus uh, rushers led by Aiden Love. We'll talk to him about him more in just a moment. But uh, it seems like things are getting figured out there for uh, the, the Loomis Wolves. Yeah, we thought maybe they would have a pretty nice season this year, and and they certainly have. When you can beat Giltner sixty to twelve, even though Giltner's down a little bit, that's uh, that's that's some good stuff. And and as you mentioned, losing to Kennesaw, I mean Kennesaw has just beaten up everybody for the last few years. But it's a good Loomis team. I really like Aiden Love at one hundred and forty two yards per game. And we're in as you mentioned already, this is a this is a good team here. Yeah, Lovett has ran for uh, 312 yards this season, so not bad there. They are kind of in the same boat of like Southern Valley. They they have a lot of players and experience coming back. They obviously had some successful teams having basketball the last couple of years, and now it's kind of transitioning to the football field, at least it seems like early on this year. Yeah, and and eventually those athletes are going to find success, and and that's what's happening with Loomis right now. They've got a nice collection of athletes for, uh, for everybody for and uh, for any sport, and they're putting it together on the football field. I expect them to have a lot of success this week too. Again, it's two and one Loomis hosting the zero and three Overton Eagles. That game can be heard on ninety three point one The River. And our final matchup of our triple header that can be heard on the stations of KRBN this upcoming Friday, it is Cami Country, where Gothenburg will travel to St. Paul for a couple-hour road trip. And, well, for Gothenburg and the Swedes, they, they finally got off the schneid. They got their first W this past Friday, beating Broken Bow 15-12. to Wasn't necessarily pretty, but uh, listen, at th this point in the year, after struggling the first two contests, uh, you certainly will take it if you're Coach Hakey. Well, and they got down in that game, and we're down in the fourth quarter, and and uh, made a comeback, and <clears throat> so it was. It's certainly a win is a win, but my goodness, this uh, this pre district schedule of Gothenburg's has just been brutal. When it looks at when you look at Cozad to start things off, and how good they what a good year they've had. Kearney Catholic, and now this St. Paul team is uh, really good. So uh, another tough test for Coach Hakey and the Swedes. Yeah, and things don't get any easier for Gothenburg. Not even after tonight. Their their district, they're all over in the Western Panhandle. A lot of road trips, so obviously things not any easier. Gothenburg is one and two coming into tonight's con or into Friday night's contest. Now, as Scott mentioned, St. Paul, they are a terrific team, kind of a sleeper team. People are looking at two and one on the season, and boy, they come off of a big win against Carney Catholic last Friday. 33 to 7. Scott, you and I saw Carney Catholic a couple of weeks ago beat Gothenburg, but to hold them to only seven points and score 33, that's impressive. And and Gothenburg struggled offensively in that game. We were really impressed with the Stars defense. We thought, man, these guys are really, really good. And then they end up giving up 250 yards to Eli Larson for St. Paul. Now, this is a very uh good. Uh, running back that St. Paul has. We hadn't heard about him. And Eli Larson, 541 yards rushing on the year. But to get 250 
against a Stars defense that looked quick and uh, impressive against Gothenburg. And uh, so, yeesh, this <laughs> this is a tough one. This is a tough one here. This is a good St. Paul Wildcat team. Yeah, Larson is kind of where it all starts for the Wildcats. They do toss the ball around here and there, but certainly when you have a guy that can run for over 500 yards uh, in three games, got to give it to the to the big fella in the back. And uh, he obviously has had a, a great season in 250 yards last week against Carney Catholic, as Scott has mentioned. So not going to be an easy test this upcoming Friday for the Gothenburg Swedes. But again, it seems like if you can potentially slow down the running attack, which they kind of did at times against Carney Catholic when we saw them, they may have a chance. Well, you know that they're going to be ready. Coach Scott and Coach Hakey, they're going to have a plan for Larson to try to uh, shut him down. They'll be running all over the place. They had a nice plan against Harburg for Kearney Catholic. We'll see. But, of course, the question mark really becomes for Gothenburg is can they find some offense to yeah. support that good defense? That's a good point. Well, that game will be heard on Cami Country. That game will kick off at 7 o'clock, and you can hear that game again on Cami Country at krvn.com. It is Gothenburg looking for back-to-back -back wins as they are 1-2 and two on the season, while St. Paul is a 2-1. and one. And our game to highlight over on KUVR, it is Holdridge, who got their first W this past week as well. They will host the Sydney Red Raiders, who lost last week to a very good Kozad team. Both teams 1-2 and two coming into the contest on Friday. And uh, for both these teams, they're still figuring things out. Both teams are very young. And uh, this will be an interesting game to watch for uh, on KUVR as well. Yeah, I think so, because uh, Holdridge, you know, didn't score any points their first two games, get 35 in their second, their third game to get the win. Uh, maybe they are getting some stuff figured out. This is a this is a, a this is actually a really intriguing matchup. I think both teams are going to try to really get something going and uh, try to get some momentum. But I, I like where the Dusters are. Might be figuring some things out here at least almost midway through this 2020 football season. Again, it's another, another triple header coming up for you this upcoming Friday. Just a reminder on 880 KRVN, it is Southern Valley. Uh, taking on Elm Creek. Both teams are 2-1 and one on the season. Well, on 93.1 at the River, it is Overton traveling to Loomis. They're looking for their first victory of the year. Loomis is 2-1. and one. And on Cami Country, it is Gothenburg traveling to St. Paul. Gothenburg trying to get back-to-back -back wins. They are 1-2 and two on the year, while St. Paul is 2-1. and one. All three games will kick off at 7 p.m. And again, all three games can be heard on krvn.com. Well, Scott, this is going to be another great week uh, of matchups coming up on the stations of KRVN and again online as well. And uh, some games where we'll figure out how good teams are. And, and maybe we're starting to see some teams, maybe where they were sleepy-eyed in the first couple of weeks, now figuring things out. Well, I hope so. And, and, and it's just, again, we're just grateful to have football early. Yeah, we are. That's for sure. Well, that'll do it for this home edition of the Press Box Preview. He's Scott Foster. I'm Tyler Cavalli. Thanks again to our great sponsors for allowing us to bring you the Press Box Preview.